Hey, this is Lance from Chain. You might have heard a lot about the Gemini 2.5 series of models. They've been getting a lot of attention after a number of releases in recent weeks. I want to show you a few of their capabilities and showcase a really simple but pretty cool researcher I built using the Gemini models. And it takes advantage of Gemini's native search tool and video understanding tool for YouTube URLs to do research on a given video as well as a topic, combines that research, and will produce a report, but also will generate you a podcast using Gemini's text-to-speech model. So it's utilizing Gemini's multimodal text-to-speech capabilities, video understanding capabilities, and native search tool capabilities, all in one little simple researcher that's very easy to get started with. Let me show you this in action first. This is my researcher in LangGraph Studio. I can very simply pass in a topic that I want to research and I can pass in a YouTube URL. Now the topic I want to research is actually related to a recent video you see here that Karpathy released talking about LMs in the new era of software engineering. And one of the interesting points he makes is that LMs are a new type of operating system. So I wanted to research this a little bit more. I pass that in as my research topic to my little Gemini researcher and I pass in the YouTube URL. I hit submit and this kicks off. In studio here, we can see it running different parts of the research flow. So initially it did research. Now it's analyzing the video URL. Now it's creating the report by combining the results from web search and video analysis. Now it's creating a podcast based upon its research, which is another alternative and nice way to ingest the research itself. And it's done. So it's kind of neat here in LangGraph Studio, which I use for the orchestration of the Soul Researcher. I can look here, I can see the inputs and outputs of each node. And I can click here to see this trace in LangSmith. So I can open this up in LangSmith. And I can see here is the overall researcher. This is each LLM call you can see. I have the inputs and outputs of the node captured, which is pretty cool. We can see we created a report. The report is captured here with a nice executive summary and a bunch of sources. We can see the video analysis. This is really neat. The video itself, I passed in as a YouTube URL. It's able to look at the video and give me this really nice overview of what Karpathy said about LMs as an OS from the video. Very cool capability. And the final thing that I'll show you, which I really love, is this podcast creation. And here, actually, it provides me with a podcast transcript, which is fantastic, and the link, which I will go ahead and show you right now. So I'm in the repo here, and this was the generated podcast link, and let's listen to that now briefly. The podcast. Today, we're diving into a fascinating concept that's been gaining a lot of buzz. The idea that large language models, or LLMs, are evolving into a new kind of operating system. Dr. Sarah, this sounds like a pretty big shift. Can you give us an overview of what this analogy means? Absolutely, Mike. It's a really insightful way to think about LLMs, championed by people. So it's really impressive. Basically, the new Gemini 2.5 models allow you to do multi-speaker audio generation. You can generate these synthetic podcasts, just like you could in Notebook LLM, but now it's available to you through the API. And... That's, of course, really cool because you can kind of customize and build it into your applications like you see here with this little researcher agent. And so this podcast basically explains to me everything that's in the report based on the research about the concept of LMs as a new kind of... And we can just skip ahead and listen to a little bit more of it. ...term data storage and retrieval. And when LLMs use external tools like a calculator, a Python interpreter, or even browse the web, those are like the peripheral devices or programming libraries that an OS allows applications to access. So, so basically, I found this to be actually really good, and I encourage you to play with it a little bit. But let me step back and talk a little bit about this release more broadly and talk about how this actually all worked under the hood. So here's just some general notes. The Gemini 2.5 Pro and Flash models recently went GA on June 17. And the technical report's really cool. I copy this image from the technical report below. And you can kind of see that what's neat is native reasoning, multimodal, million token context, very cool native tools, including search as we saw to support things like research, and also native video understanding, the ability to pass a YouTube URL, 
process it accordingly. And of course, text-to-speech with capabilities such as multiple speakers. And these are a few of the specific models that, that I played with a bit. So in particular, I use Gemini 2.5 Flash and Gemini 2.5 Flash TTS Preview in my researcher. Now, if you go on, for example, X and hear what people are saying, the vibe is consistently very strong on these models. People really like them, and that's reflected in the benchmarks. So they're state-of-the-art on a bunch of different benchmarks, and LM Marine is one example. You can see it kind of hits the top of the leaderboard on a number of tasks like text, web dev, vision, search. I do want to highlight one particular vibe test I thought was very interesting. So at the AI Engineer World's Fair a few weeks ago, very big conference here in San Francisco, Simon Wilson gave a great talk talking about the state of models. Now he does something interesting. With every model release, he asked the model to produce a drawing of a pelican riding a bicycle. Now he asked it to produce that as an SVG image, which can be generated in code and then rendered. So any model that can generate code can produce this SVG image. Now this is the image produced by Gemini 2.5 Pro. It's, it looks pretty good and pretty impressive. But what he did was pretty interesting. He set up a benchmark where he basically asked a greater model, I believe it was GPT-40, to compare images of pelicans across all the different models. So it was kind of like an internal chatbot arena, so to speak, where models were forced to compete on the quality of their ability to do this task. And these are the results of this benchmark. Gemini 2.5 Pro turned out to be the best. So again, it's just like another more fun validation. This is a very, very strong series of models. Now the Gemini team put out a deep researcher template using LangGraph a few weeks ago. You can see that here. It has quite a lot of stars, a lot of activity, and it's a great template. And it kind of works like this, where a question comes in, it generates a set of queries, it does web search using the native search tool in Gemini, reflects some search results, does more search, and does kind of a final answer generation as needed. So I took this code, I modified it a little bit and kind of simplified it for my own multimodal researcher, which looks like this. And you saw it previewed already in Studio, but it's using the native search tool, just like we saw with their deep researcher, but it also takes advantage of native video understanding as well as text-to-speech as I show with the podcast generation. So here's the repo. Getting started is pretty simple. Just clone it, create an env file, and the env file just create a Gemini API key, place it there, and then you can just run this to spin up LangGraph Studio locally on your machine, and that's exactly what we were just looking at earlier. But let me show you the code a little bit. So if you go over to the repo, you can go to source, agent, open up graph.py. This shows you the code, and it's pretty simple. All that's happening is we create a few different nodes to do different things in our researcher. And you can actually look in LangGraph Studio to see those nodes visually. So what's pretty neat is you're gonna start, go to search, optionally analyze the video if the video URL is passed, create a report, create a podcast. So four nodes, easy enough. And those are reflected right here. Our search research node. This, as you can see, is just using Gemini's GenAI client. And we basically pass in the topic that's provided by the user and a very simple prompt, research this topic and give me an overview. Now what's nice is I use Google's native search tool just like this. It's as simple as just passing a list of tools with Google search as one of the options. And this is a little helper function I wrote just to parse the response. You can see that in utils, but I get the search text back. And what's very nice is I also get the sources from search. I save both of those. Then the video analysis. You can see this also uses Gen AI client. And the only difference is you just specify the file data as a video URL and you pass in a prompt. Now this is subtle and very interesting. You can basically pass in a YouTube URL and any arbitrary prompt. So you can like ask a very particular question about the video. And I kind of do that because if my prompt basically says, based on the video content, give me an overview of the user's topic, right? So in our case, it was able to isolate Carpathy's comments related to LLM as an operating system from the video. And we saw that in the trace. In particular, let me show you that. So here was that node, analyze video. You can see this is the Langsmith trace. 
And this node is exactly what we're looking at here. So you can see this traceable decorator, YouTube video analysis, I name that node. In the Langsmith trace, YouTube video analysis, the node name is reflected. And we can see on the input, the video URL is passed, the topic is passed, and this is a synthesis of the video related to our topic of interest. You can see it zooms in on the idea of LLMs as operating systems. Really neat. The Create Report node just uses the results from search, the results from video analysis, and pulls that all together into a single report. You can see that here. So it, it passes all that back to Gemini. Gemini distills everything to a nice consolidated report. It gives you the video source it used to write the report and all the URLs from its web search. It's pretty neat. Now the final thing is this create podcast node. So I'll zoom in here a little bit. In utils, I have this create podcast discussion. This is where I pass my prompt. So I pass in the findings from search, the findings from video analysis, and I ask it generate dialogue with this particular format. So it's all customizable. Again, kind of the, the names of the different actors. And here, I use Genia Client again. And these are all the configurations I use for that text-to-speech model. And you can look at the Gemini API docs to get more detail on this, but the point is you can basically specify speaker names, um, speaker voices. It's really very cool. I encourage you to play with this a lot more. Um, this is just kind of my initial testing of the capabilities here. And you can see in the configuration, I allow you to set all those different parameters. So these are the different voices that were used, core and puck. Um, you can see there's a bunch of different text-to-speech configurations I allow you to play with. These are some search configurations you can play with and so forth. And when you're in Studio, you can open up this default tab and you can tune any of those configurations. That's the really nice thing about Studio. It's a very nice interactive environment for testing things like this. And so often, for example, in Studio, I'll try modifying some of these configurations. Like here, for example, you see I'm using 2.5 Flash. You could try using 2.5 Pro. And I'm using 2.5 Flash Preview for text-to-speech. Again, you can consider using Pro. And, you know, all these parameters you can tune as desired. If you make changes, you can then save them here. And they are saved as a new, what we call, assistant. But anyway, that's just showing you a brief preview of how with Studio can very easily configure a researcher for models or different temperature or other things. And so again, to summarize, this is what we built. It's super simple. There's not much code. You can play with this and customize it very easily. You pass in a topic, you pass in a URL, you can set any configurations all in Studio very easily. With the URL, it'll use Gemini's native video understanding, given a YouTube URL to basically ingest the video and synthesize and answer questions based upon your prompt. In our case, we just pass in the topic as part of that prompt. We also pass in the topic to Gemini to do a general web search. We combine those results together. We write a report and we generate a podcast. That's it. Really nice and simple and showcases three really interesting Gemini capabilities. So I encourage you to play with this. I was extremely impressed, particularly with the text-to-speech. That's something that I had not really used in the past and it's quite interesting. Particularly if you're someone that likes audio as a learning format, like I particularly like listening to podcasts. So it's a very interesting idea to go from kind of research to an audio output format very easily using a model like this, all via the API. So I encourage you to play with this and I thought it was really cool. So feel free to ask any questions below. Thanks.